and you should know how to connect. That's the connector Java driver, right? We give you JDBC and uh, Mongo's form for MongoDB connector. So you can use those uh, API to connect and interact with. Selenium don't have API to give you those are the API you can use, JDBC and uh, from Mongo's API. So once you inter once you connect, you can interact with database. You can insert, you can retrieve, you can remove updates, data. So we have So we have next week, right? And I'll will confirm how many days we have next week. There's a New Year's Eve. Uh, I'm not sure we might have day off, but we must have one plus in the next week. But we might have day off also. Uh, maybe Saturday. I don't know. I'll, I'll, I'll double check. And then we have week off. Week of 7, 7, 8, January 7, 8, 14, 15, 21, 22. So 1, 2, 3. So 3 and a half weeks left. In 3 and a half weeks, all well, the class, but it looks like 4 weeks, including uh, your time. So let's 3 and a half to 4 weeks. In 4 weeks, we learned Core Java, right, last few weeks. We're going to apply that using Selenium. This now is the, the main part in a sense that for true automation skills, which is you need to use one tool in the market. That is Selenium we're going to use. Now, without knowing syntax of any programming language is going to be hard for someone to do it. So this is what we did already. We, we learned well, Java and we're going to apply that. By the way, uh, I share a link. Right? Java is still the popular language in the world uh, for data mining or for machine learning. Looks like Python is the top one. Well, I I read it uh, day before yesterday. It's not coming up here. Anyway, the Python is still the top one for machine learning, and Java is the second one. So within three to four weeks, we're going to learn <coughs> Selenium API, and we're going to build framework. So what is it 
role of automation. What automation engineer do? And why is important role in this uh, software development uh, community? Let's start, everyone. Uh, let's uh, if you like. So now, as web development, right, is uh, increasing day by day. Well, we're in a moment now. Pretty much everybody have, every industry have sophisticated website. Not only that, like to serve the client, you have to have dynamic uh, websites. Not only the browser based, but also the mobile and tablet support. So in agile environment, compared to waterfall, waterfall is uh, nobody follow waterfall nowadays. Everyone follow agile. The waterfall was more you develop one thing, right? You wait until the end to do testing. So developer been working a few months or a year. They build their system and they ship to, to QA to test it. And in the, the period of time they're testing, developer are kind of sitting to wait for the feedbacks. Now, it doesn't happen anymore. They say, OK, instead of building the entire applications, let's build piece by piece and give it to QA. We can test it, give it feedback, and we proceed as we uh, do incremental changes. So if you the feedback comes, something goes wrong, the file box, we fix those issues. So it's incremental improvements. And we don't build the entire thing at once. We build piece by piece, right? Uh, feature by feature, and slowly you test this. Get uh, as we move, as we proceed with the development, we try to make sure uh, it it is working on the right path, and the development is uh, going without any issues. So agile is important now. It's a dynamic in environment. Since they introduced agile, it's now very crucial to have our mission team to give quick feedback. If, we, if, it's, if, the, if the development team rely on manual testing, in that case, it might take time to get feedbacks because to test some of the features of the applications, it's kind of redundant. And if to hire many people to do all those uh, test cases, writing test cases, and Going through all this uh, regression test, it's kind of time consuming, also research consuming. That means you have to hire many people uh, to to run uh, your regression test and give your feedback to the development team. So if you have large applications, sophisticated applications, without true automation, it's become difficult. So that's why they introduce automation that can be um, Replaced for regression test. This automation tool is a uh, few of them out there like QTP, Selenium, and uh, a few others in the markets, but those are the two, the popular one. Selenium was introduced around 2008 9 as Selenium 1. And then Selenium 1 was more. The Selenium one was called, known as also RC, RC is remote control. And Selenium 2 came also in the market around 2009, and it's known as uh, web driver. These two are separate projects. Around 2010, they merge and they become one product. Once they merge, they start supporting more Selenium 2, which is known as WebDriver, and they kind of not supporting much with Selenium 1. 
There's a one called Selenium ID also. ID is kind of record and playback. But industry don't use much as a professional automation engineer. If you rely on ID, then it's not good. ID is the record and playback. And we don't need someone who learned new Selenium probably use this to get export the code and make it to work. But for you, you want to be using this API, which is web driver API, that you can write your own code, right? So now this Selenium 2 is uh, supported by multiple language, right? It's uh, Java, PHP, Python, Ruby, JavaScript. So we're going to use Java for that. So as, as a true production engineer, you'll be writing code, building framework for all your applications. You know, you, you're part of responsible. And you're writing code to test those applications. And if you write a framework that can be run in Jenkins, give it running everyday basis whenever a developer commit their code and give you the feedback to the team. So to build that, you need some tool configurations, right, that we are learning now. Java, you need, of course, to write one language for, and you need the API, which is Selenium API, to automate that features. And you need uh, other tools like Jenkins setup and maybe to manage dependencies. And the cloud environment to run, like SauceLab or browser stack. So we'll explore that slowly. Now, why is, how is it going to play a role as automation engineer in the team? Yes, Selenium Grid is one of them, I'm sure we'll discuss that. So, how application works. Let's go over a little bit on this. So as a user, right, you're going to go to browser and you type for, type your domain or URL www.amazon.com. You're going to go to site and look for the items you want to buy. Once you go, make sure you know you can you can launch the app applications and you can browse to the applications. You can sign up. You can look for items and go to checkout. You can use the card. This is what you expect as a user, right? Or if it's a media company like New York Post or CNN, you can read, go to the site and read the news. So this is what consumer wants. So as a developer, you're going to build that application to face the consumer, right? So this is the UI side. Now, all this UI, all the request, request is coming from, from the server, right? Somewhere is hosting it. So if, if that is hosting somewhere in AWS, or in Microsoft Azure, or in IBM Cloud, it can be hosted there, right? So it's hosted there somewhere, <coughs> let's say in AWS, right? If you hosted that, applications. Now you could have a middleware and say, okay, I need to log in, right? So you need to build that login features here. So now you'll be building those features right here, right? One of them is login features, search features, right? Search for items. Then it could be checkout, right, from the uh, shopping cart and payment system and maybe a recommendation for a client what to buy and um, one other feature could be, okay, connect to databases, right, so on. So this is the developer are building this all, all these web services or APIs. And now your database could be somewhere remote or could be same location, right? This could be databases. 
the moment they be MySQL or Oracle, right? So this database, this is the way applications which is all the API is supporting. Now, and it's, this application is running in a server. Maybe it's Glassfish server, WebLogic server, or uh, Trumpet server, right? It's running. It's a two-way communication, right? Send a request, the response, fine. So now the entire thing can be hosted in AWS. The other thing can be hosted in AWS, right? So thousands of millions of companies are hosting there in AWS. Netflix, one of the big ones to do that. So users don't have, have direct connection to database. User can access to web services or APIs. When you send a request, okay, I need to log in. The request comes here, right, to the server. And server sends a request to the database server, make sure that user is there. And once you find the username and password match, then you send, okay, it's a valid authentication. Okay, successful login. Fine. And the user also next, once you log in, user you log in, then search for the items in Amazon.com. Hey, you want to buy a laptop, right? And looking for the items, look for the database. Yes, it's available, and the price and all the information is there. Then you say, okay, I want to buy it. And then you say, okay, add to the shopping cart, and then check out. Then you call the payment system. So all these components can talk to each other, right? And all this API. So all the components you build, one of them search, one of them is payment system, one of them for authentication, sign up, login, registrations, search, algorithms, many other things are there. Everything is built by some developers here. And this can be built by Java, PHP, Python, Ruby, right, all this. But mostly, Amazon use Java for their web services. Once you build, it, once you log in, and once you do a search for an item to buy, so everything has to come coming from database, and the server has to, you know, send the, you know, so server has to process the request. What the server do is process the request. Request comes in, it processes it, right? Then send back to the client. So like this, one of the user, you could have millions of users, right, coming to the site. So now, Amazon makes sure they want to serve the customer without any broken link or any fault. If anything goes wrong with the payment system, they might lose money. If anything goes wrong buying items, right, they could uh, lose the customers. It's a competitive world out there. You need to serve your customer without any sort of issues. So that's the important. Quality assurance is important. So that's why QA job is introduced. Make sure you all the functionality are working properly as supposed to, right? So now, as an automation engineer, you're not going to focus only uh, in the UI side. Yes, main focus using Selenium. Selenium can do automate those features on the browser side. But what about the backend side? So with the Selenium, you can simply automate those the UI test. You can automate those. Make sure you can search through. I'm looking for items. I can search. I can go to shopping cart. See item is there or not. Right after you add this. Once you add, the cart should be one item now. Add more items. Right. And if you add more items, now we have two more items, right? So make sure you only go, proceed to check out, right? You sign in. The other stuff you 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 can test using Selenium. You can automate this UI side. But then. The part is involved also. Make sure all these functionalities are working properly in the web services APIs. That's why you can use different tools for that. 
like SOAP UI, or you can write your own um, API or framework using HTTP client to test our services. You can use Jmeter to test these services. So developer write unit testing. We show that how to write unit testing using JUnit or testing G. So they write unit test, make sure all these components, piece of uh, works are aligned properly, working as supposed to. As a automation or test development role, as that role, you can work as also make sure all the web services are working properly. So this is login component. Make sure the login component are returning all the to access tokens and uh, it can connect to database and provide all the requests. You can, without the UI, we are saying, without the UI, without the browser, you, you want to make sure all the web services or API are working properly. That is API testing or web service testing. This is another part you can explore using either SOAP UI or without using tool, just implement on your own, which is using Apache HTTP client. So you, everybody uses HTTP client, even Jmeter, a lot of servers are using this. So you can use this, make a call. You can use that API to make a call to login or to search or cards or items. Make sure you can return, you can get it, the return value. And this is how you can verify API testing. So another tool in the market you can explore easily is called Postman. We start using Postman from now on. Whenever you have chance, just download Postman API testing. So this is another area that I have some idea how our service API testing works, and I can get familiar with the tools. Okay, yeah, we'll give it a link. Later. No, no, no. It's API testing. Postman is for API testing. Jmeter is primarily for load performance testing, but you can also use that uh, for web service testing. Okay? Fine. So now, now let's focus on UI testing, end to end testing. What is different kind of testing? Let's discuss about that. So we can do once developer write some, you know, features, they write unit test, right? That cover a lot of scenarios. The integration testing. What you need integration testing is once all the let's say different developer work in different components, and then all the components has to work as a one app, one application, right? So all the pieces of plus methods are components when you try to deploy into one place, make sure that integration works. It may it may work in unit level. It may not work when work is the components or one applications. That is why you need integration testing. Right.
Okay? And then you say U I R N to N testing, right? So this is most automation engineers do. But also company nowadays they want to make sure you do API web service testing and slowly if it's more S jet role you do integration testing and become also part of part of unit testing. These are the process for testing environment, right? Of course performance testing is there. Uh, you can to make sure the performance of request, right, for each features that can be tested too, using load runner or geometer. So, yeah, this is part of the performance, cover by performance. So now, it's for different tools you can use. So end-to-end -end testing, as a user, you want to make sure your end-to-end -end testing, right? That is, you're, you're here now. This is end-to-end -end testing. As the user will come into the site, the login, browse for the items, select the items to the shopping cart, do checkout, make the payment with the credit cards, and get the confirmation. That's end-to-end -end testing, without knowing much of the back end. So you care about more what's happening in the UI side, right? So that can be done using Selenium. This automation can be done by Selenium. That by used to be done by manual uh, resource, that is, you have to come here and look for items. Uh, so that think about Amazon has it's a big website, right? And if you just rely on manual testing, how much time do you need it to test the entire applications? A lot, a few days, right? It, they're constantly updating, constantly changing things. And if you have to do that, it's, this is not a concrete thing that you you build one times and it doesn't fall. Software is delicate things. If you can make changes, it might affect other part of the components. So it might get breaks very easily. So you need a lot of revision testing, and that can be automated. So all the redundant work can be automated. So this is the unit te UI testing that more mostly doing by. Selenium. This is how automation role play. But also, as I said, you are also part of responsible now. API testing, slowly integration testing, more about as that role, right? So these are other area that software developer in tests or software engineering test, right? They doing more of this. All right, so now since we, everyone took the six weeks course, have some idea about testing life cycles and other things, if everyone have it, if not, you can join the, after Selenium Plus N, you can join the sessions. So any doubt, any questions up to this point? Okay, so now, to automate this, we saw Selenium is needed, right? So how Selenium works? By the way, Selenium is a chemical with symbol SE, atomic number 34. So why do you call Selenium also this? Okay. Selenium actually Kills mercury. Selenium component, which is a chemical element, can kill mercury. Now, why the name of this? This is this is true. This is a fact. Selenium, com, selenium, chemical can kill mercury chemical. That was uh, this is a fact, right? As chemists, they, you know. So now, why selenium in terms of tool? It's because QTP has 
QTP, actually, if you go, QTP owned by Mercury at one point. So, it was owned by HP Mercury, right? If you read the story of this, it's from Mercury. Where right, does it say here? Where? Where? Can you see Mercury? Right here, right? Yeah, it's written by Mercury. So it was owned by Mercury, QTP, and they named it, okay, let's kill the Mercury. So what killed Mercury? Selenium killed Mercury. So they named Selenium. Okay, fine. Uh, that was uh, the naming things. So let them HQ. Why, why you went there? So this is the official website of Selenium. SeleniumHQ.org. Selenium is a sort of tools to automate web browsers. It only works with web browsers. It doesn't work with uh, your desktop applications. So any application that support browser, it will work. Okay. So I can read this documentation, explore the site slowly. Now to download the tool, you can go download tab. So you can to download a few things. Selenium server and the client driver. So depending on the client driver you're going to use. If you use C sharp, you can download C sharp. If you use Java, you download Java. So these two components you need to download in order to work with. Server and the client driver. So click on that. This two things you need to download. All right, let's show you how to do Eclipse. Uh, just one test case, then we'll go move to IntelliJ. You want Java Download. Not doc. We need Java jar files. So let's create a project. And what's the name of the project? You want to choose the name. Selenium 1, right? So remember, if you need any third party jar files and dependency we need, we create a folder, right? Called leave folder. New, leave, right? Fine. And then in the lib, we want to copy all those jar files. So if you go to download folder, Selenium Java, unzip that folder, extract here. So we have Selenium Java. It's ten eighteen, uh, October. Yeah. 
we downloading a Selenium WordPad or WordPad? WordPad. Download Selenium. Okay, download Selenium server to so dot zero dot one and Java client driver right here. So you go to leave folder, get all the leave, all the jar files, and let me put it here. Okay. So one more thing we need from download. We're going to. I know, just gonna show you, but then we'll move. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, I'm in uh, I'm in this spot now. Some of you like introduce, some of you yeah. like uh, Okay, good. Alright, now we need the server, right? Copy the server. So once you put it here in the lib folder, next thing you do is build path. Properties, Java build path, add jars, expand the leaf folder, copy all this, I mean, select all this to this. Do not get class part or project, right? After this jar files. Hit OK. Hit OK. Now you see that leaf is part of this project. Now with the source, create a package. Well, Amazon, right? We'll test, maybe. And the plus. Well, let's do that. Um, during test cases. So a lot of people use, but we'll be using more uh, test engine. So web driver that we're going to use. So what is web driver? So this is the Selenium Java doc. Questions? Aman? It still works as a Aman, question? Uh, sorry, Mafi, bye. Just ask the question. Don't be sorry. Oh, I didn't have a question. That's why I'm sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Gotcha. Yeah. All right. No problem. So, um, so yeah, go ahead, Sachin. Huh? Which part you missed? The lib, uh, you open the lib folder, right? And so once you put the lib folder, put all the jar files you need. 
So what two things you need. Few of the Java files from Java client driver and one is from the server. So once you have those items and build path. It's, once you download, extract the files and once you extract under leaf, there's your own leaf, right? This leaf contains all the Java files you need and then you need a server. So copy the server also. All right. So now everyone, see we're looking for the web driver one, right? Can you find one? Right here. It's an interface. It has few methods. What it can do? It can find elements. It can get current URL. It can get titles. Manage things. Navigate, you know, to sites, so on. So if I say Web driver equals driver equals null. And so in test unit, uh, J unit, the before method, you set up the environment. <coughs> Thank you. Once you set up the environment in before method, you call actual test, write all the steps for test cases you want, you want to execute. And after method, you do cleanup, which is closing the browser, closing all the windows. This is the by annotation. The annotation is simply metadata about the compiler, okay, which method to execute next. Annotation is nothing but it's metadata. So even though the method is in a right different way, it goes by annotation. That means whatever the method is located, the before method gets executed first, then test cases, test annotation, then the after method. This is all about annotation. So now, since we're going to Set up the environment. We are saying driver. So it doesn't matter whether I write the order. It doesn't matter which line you write, it goes by annotation. So if I write and that after pass, it doesn't matter. No. The execution will be to follow the um, by annotation. By annotation. So now why can you say new web driver? Mokula, can you explain that? In line 16, why is complaining? Can you see? Why? Huh? We import it. We already import it, right? That's why it's there. See, you import it. Or open QA Selenium Web Driver. When you say new Web Driver, why is not um, executing this line? Why is complaining? This is the first thing. What did we learn in core Java? This is the first line we're going to apply here. And if you can answer it. Salma, can you ex explain why you're going to send new web driver? Because we're going to instantiate here. We're, we're going to instantiate here. We're trying to instantiate that. Well, I did write here, guys. I did write here, all right? I did it on top. All right? If you, did, if you do that, still, right? Even, guys, your focus is why we can declare here. We declare in the class level, right? Instead of in the local. That's why you saw there. Why is complaining? Can you read the message? It, it doesn't make sense, the message. That means you didn't learn enough in core Java. This is type. What type? We, we are saying it's web driver type. Driver is web driver type. Guys, the first thing we learn, we, we learn and we forget that, or we, we never learned. So then, why can't we instantiate that? We don't have that um, constructor. What constructor do you need here? What constructor do you need? Huh? Oh, it's an interface. That's so, why it took so long to <laughs> the message? Huh? Why taking so long 
to by reading this message, hey, you cannot instantiate an interface. It's an interface. You cannot instantiate that. Guys, we, if this is you learn in code Java. This is what you did in the exam, right? You design some interfaces. So if it's the interface, what are the sub, what are the classes that extended or implemented? So all known implemented classes are Chrome driver, Firefox driver, and all the browser specific. Right? So you have to say Firefox driver. And you have to import that. So whatever was implemented by different browsers. So once you drive driver do that, driver dot driver dot manage. What to manage? Implicit timeouts. You want to you want to ex say how long can you wait if any like by default Selenium run in five milliseconds. So now you're gonna wait for you're gonna click on some components or do some actions. What is the maximum time can you wait for that response? We're saying maybe fifteen seconds. Usually they do twenty seconds, thirty seconds some people do. Let's say fifteen seconds. The max you're gonna wait for that response. And timeout, time units. In second, in millisecond, right? So we say in second. Driver dot. We can do that too. It's fine. Then go to URL, right? Get the URL. What's the URL? So we're saying, hey, get the Firefox launch. And uh, we need implicit timeout. So the max you can wait for 15 seconds for any request. Uh, we send a response. If we don't receive within 15 seconds, we'll throw error. And we're saying, OK, when you launch the Firefox, what application do you want to navigate to? We are saying launch Amazon.com. And then, Driver dot manage. What else you can manage? So if you, it's, it's a more object-oriented programming design that Selenium web driver. Selenium one was not much. Selenium two is a more robustly using OP features. So, so now if you say driver dot manage, what do you manage? All the options are here. You can manage uh, timeouts, delete cookies, add cookies, right? And notify other things from different classes. One of the things we're interested about manage here window. What to do with the window? Now you see you can uh, full screen, get positions, and uh, wait for timeouts and set positions. And we're saying we're going to maximize the window. This is all the setup is about. So any test we run, we need to set up. And that is before method is doing for you. So what we did is, if you say, I want to go to Amazon.com and look for items. Now, you cannot expect that book page are open without launching the browser, without Navigate to Amazon.com, right? Can you do that? No. The preliminary thing is you have to launch the browser, like Firefox, right? 
with the Firefox. Yeah, the machine was removed everything, so we can download that. So everyone download Firefox if you don't have one, would use that. Download. Okay. Meanwhile, it's downloading, right? Okay. So what is downloading? So we're saying prepare this environment before you do the test. Once you launch the browser, we want to see, maybe click on the items. Anyone? Console, right? You could uh, in the call, or you could call. What other term to use? All right. Call console, a part of it, but more about it. I would say. Uh, inspect elements or, or developer tools. So every browser have that. For Chrome, you can just go to settings and click on it, or simply the hotkeys are Control, Shift I, or Command, Command, Option I uh, in Mac. So once you do that, we can see that all the elements, all the iframes, and all the elements you see for HTML. If you say, OK, I want to click on these items. On the right side, I see this image is from here, Romance, right? If you say, OK, I want to click on art and photography, right? This is the part of the HTML code that is clicking on this image. So this is how you, you get to be master of uh, inspecting local elements. This is how it's done in Chrome, but in Firefox, there's no built-in, but there's a tool which is called add-ons, right, that you can download, and that add-ons will help you to inspect. And the few tools are out there, it's a few add-ons out there for Firefox, one of them is Firebug. So let's add this Firebug onto your Chrome, uh, onto your Firefox, One more time. Go to Firefox. Add-ons. And search for add-ons. See how we search. Really how we search. Uh, where is this search option? Firebug, but we want within that browser to look for it. That option I'm looking for. Uh, options, no. They should be, they used to have a tab to look for it. I don't see more add-ons, okay. All right, now here it's Firebug. See that Firebug? So add to Firefox. And we need a few other things. Firepath. Firepath will give you XPath and uh, CSS. Add to Firefox. Firebug. Firebug, yes. And Firepath. So those two we needed. Okay, once you have this, you can restart to get affected. 
Firebug and Firepath, yes. We don't need Selenium ID now. It works. Add-ons. It add-ons. Where did it go? You don't need the link. It simply just search it. Simply go to add on. Mine didn't restart. Okay, so uh, so fire bug. Okay, install and fire path. Install. Was so restall, install, restart now. If you don't restart, it don't affect. You don't able to see it there. Once you install, you see that there's a bug. If you don't see it, that means it didn't install properly. Okay, so now go to Amazon.com. Now, if you click on this bug, right, it will open up a console. The bottom, or you can also put on the side if you want to. Once you do that, this is the but the cursor you're gonna hover it, click on it, and once you click on it, then you can hover these items right in the your web, and it give you that uh, HTML view of that code. So this is for the fire bug. For the fire path, give you option of CSS. If you only click on CSS of this, give you CSS. If you click on XPath, it's going to give you XPath. So this is a nice tool. Sometimes you cannot rely on all the time Firepath, but we'll make our own. So that's why you have to learn to make from HTML. Take HTML view and make on your own. Tool doesn't give you guaranteed uh, elements. Yeah. Yeah. So now everybody has, should have the fire, fire bug and Firepath. If you have so, then now go back to the code. Go back to the code and see if it's there. So now if you launch it, before you launch, if you say, so driver dot get current URL. And we'll launch it, right? Run as geonic test cases. So Gecko driver is needed. Look like it's not there. I will discuss what is Gecko driver. Gecko driver, why need Gecko driver? It's because in order to run with Firefox, so they, by default, Selenium used to uh, come with that uh, driver and you're able to launch Firefox driver without any uh, system path or binary. Now, the new versions, version 3, you have to have that, so there's a dependency of this Firefox driver and you need that Gecko driver. This is temporary, but at one point, it will be go away. So Gecko driver, if you have a Mac, download the Mac versions. If you have a Windows, download the Windows versions. This is the link you need. Once you download, 
Now I'm going to copy that. And then to copy the Gecko driver, go to download folder. All right, and where is the Gecko driver? Anyone see? Gecko, where is it? Right here. So unzip that, extract here. Once you unzip that, copy this. Okay, once you copy, let's put it here somewhere. Another driver, well, we didn't say package. I said, how come that get that driver? Get it this one. Where is it? This. Yes. Put it here, right? Now you have Gecko driver here. Once you have this Gecko driver, copy the path. We'll, we'll find a better way for now. Copy this. In here, right before the driver, it's a system dot out, not out. Sorry, system dot properties. System dot set properties. set property, okay, we have, we'll write, so web driver, right, web driver, dot, Firefox, dot, marionette, marionette, m-a-r-i-o-n, ETPE. So this is the driver we're using, and then we have to set the path of the driver. This is the path. So Java do either one forward slash or two or two backslash, right? Isn't it? Once you do that, once you do that, then it will be able to launch, hopefully. There is no WW. Right? So, and HTTPS. Oh, there is W, but HTTPS. So, close, close that, run it again. browser version issue. If it's, what version do you have? It's version of 50. Anyone have lower versions you can try? 
like 48, 49. And if you see if it can load the browser. Okay, now it's getting the driver. Anyone have lower version of Firefox? Please try. Let me know if, if you launch. Okay, we can do also Chrome. For Chrome, uh, once you come back from lunch, you can try that. So meanwhile, if you have lower version, try it. And I'll try to also make it the Chrome working. So it's a 141. Let's go for lunch break. Once you come back, we'll uh, try to see why during lunch. All right. Uh, we'll be back 2.10. Yeah? yeah. 2.10, we'll be back, guys. Thank you. Uh, I'll give the link. Don't download it. In the webinar. Somebody share in the Hangout. That, what, what, get a driver link, please. It's a
Yeah, yeah, yeah. 